welcome to another Blu-ray update, and this will be my final Blu-ray update for a very, very long time, I would imagine. Um, I'm moving away out of the country, saying goodbye to the UK, and uh, hello to a new life, I guess, uh, hopefully. We'll see how that goes, but for now, yeah, um, this will be my final update, and as soon as I move away, uh, buying Blu-rays is going to be the least of my... Uh, um, indulgences I guess uh, so yeah maybe one here or there who knows we'll see what happens but um the only thing I'm really eyeing up that I have to get is um the Walking Dead season 3 governor's fish tank fish tank um, well I guess they are fish tanks but yeah the governor uh, tank uh, season 3 blu-ray which looks amazing I have to get that and of course Breaking Bad is actually coming out on blu-ray in the UK in June so if I have any spare money, it's going all towards that, <laughs> because uh, I want those Blu-rays badly. Now, um, <clears throat> it's actually a bit bigger than I anticipated, really, but um, I'm not sure if the first two Blu-rays I've shown before, I'm not sure if I have shown them before. Um, I'll get the big one out of the way first. I don't know whether the package opening video will go up for this first or not, I don't know, but it is the Watchmen Collector's Edition. Um, which I bought using an Amazon credit from uh, Ryan Chatway, who gave it to me for Christmas. So, once again, Ryan, thank you so much. This is amazing. And uh, it went towards something awesome. This has the the ultimate cut of the film. It has the theatrical cut on DVD. It has the motion comic on Blu-ray and all the Blu-ray special features. And it also has the actual graphic novel inside the box as well, <coughs> which I have not watched yet. <laughs> um, yeah, let's just crack on with this, I guess. Um, I don't think I have uh, mentioned these two. I picked these up from Blockbuster. I thought it was closing down, so I might as well pick up a few things. Uh, so I've got two Blu-rays. i got um, The Adventures of Tintin, uh, The Secret of the Unicorn. Really enjoyed this in the cinema. haven't watched it again yet. I saw a bit of it on Christmas Day, actually, and that, that scene, uh, the big action scene is all in one shot. It's the kind of thing that you can only do in this kind of film, and it's amazing. Um, it's quite vague, but if you've seen the film, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Really fantastic film. Uh, great animation on, the, on that one. I should put them on the floor. Uh, next up is The Road. I've heard a lot of things about this. Uh, finally um, got it quite cheap. Uh, I think it's about £4, £3, something like that. And, um, well, the quote on the back says, All a heartbreaking classic. I'd say this film is a masterpiece. Uh, it's a fantastic film. So well made acted to the point of just genius. I mean, uh, Viggo Mortensen and the kid, whose name is uh, Cody Smith McPhee. Uh, he was also in something else. Uh, he was in uh, Let Me In, the American remake of Let the Right One In. And he's great in this too. And just the how they push themselves. I mean, it's a post-apocalyptic post post-apocalyptic film. And it's basically just about father and son trying to survive. And it's... Uh, it's very harsh and uh, stark kind of reality of, uh, you know, uh, an apocalyptic wasteland, I guess, and um, how they survive. And it's, just, it's really depressing, though. The only thing I can say is that it's so depressing that I doubt I'll watch it more than maybe one, two more times in the rest of my life, really, because it is really such a depressing film. Uh, next up, um, this is from HMV. I got some from HMV. Again most of HMV stores are closing down, the one I think in Cardiff is staying but they've got loads of things reduced. So I got Labyrinth. Uh, I actually just picked this up because I saw um, Chris Blue's video I think it was a contest um, video he was doing and this was on the background I thought that looks interesting. It looks like something I would have loved when I was a kid so I thought I'd pick that up. Labyrinth, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, next up was a film I saw in the cinema last year that I really enjoyed uh, it's not brilliant, it's not a masterpiece or anything, but I think it's a really cool, quirky film that I enjoyed a lot, and I can understand why it didn't really do so well. A Fantastic Fear of Everything, um, starring Simon Pegg, about this guy who literally is afraid of everything. He's a writer, and um, it feels a bit like like a mix between maybe like a Quentin Tarantino and Wes Anderson film. Real quirky kind of sensibility to the film, and um, just a few bits that just so off kilter. This is one bit that really reminds me of a Tarantino film, and uh, it just involves him. Actually, no, I won't even say because you should just watch this film. It's really surprising, and 
kind of sweet in a way and just really funny at times. It's a, there's a lot of things going on in this film, but I really, uh, really wanted to get it. And the thing was, it was fourteen pounds, and I never really wanted to pay that much for it because I don't love it. You know, it's not my favorite film, but. Um, there were a lot of items that were priced differently around HMV, and some of them have like a blue X on them, uh, which means it's 25% off. So I took it to the till anyway, just to see, you know, maybe it's still 25% off. Not only was it not £14, I think it was £7. It was half price, but and that was all. But there was also including the 25%, so I got it for like 4 50 or something like that. Something stupidly cheap. I was so happy with that. And the same with this one, Boba Hotep. Um, the disc wasn't in there. Um, this is an awesome film. I saw this in the cinema when it came out about 10 years ago. Uh, Bubba Hotep is about um, Elvis Presley in uh, modern day or in the 2000s. He's living in a convalescence home in Texas. And uh, I think it's Texas in the south anyway. And uh, he's an old man and you know he doesn't get out of bed and he's just leading a horrible existence. And the whole story is that before he supposedly died, um, he switched places with an Elvis impersonator called Sebastian Haff and uh, he was sick of the fame so he switched places with this guy and then this guy you know had a fondness for drugs as well and ended up uh, dying so the real Elvis couldn't you know claim that you know I'm not dead it was the, the impersonator who died and he, he becomes friends or well kind of friends with a guy in the home called um, called Jack and uh, I think he called him Jack anyway but um this old black man who believes that he's John F. Kennedy. And <laughs> Elvis is like, uh, and Elvis is played by Bruce Campbell, by the way, who plays Ash in the Evil Dead films. Awesome, awesome guy. Awesome actor, I mean. It's not like I know him or anything. Uh, but, he, but he is awesome. You know, he's just really funny and yeah, he's great. And he plays Elvis. And um, in the film, he says to um, <laughs> the black guy, he says, You know that, uh, that uh, President Kennedy was a white man? And. Uh, <laughs> And Jack says, I know, they dyed me this colour. <laughs> How else do you think they could get away with it? And so he believes that he's the president and his, his room's got like pictures of um, Harvey Oswald and all this. And It's just such a fun film. Oh yeah, the plot, of course, is that there's a, an ancient Egyptian mummy that's, that's roaming around the, the old people's home and kind of sucking their souls out of their, out of their, um, their primary fecal... Um, processor through their bum basically it sucks the soul out of their ass and uh, so Elvis and, and JFK have got to team up to take out this mummy and it's just it's hilarious and it's essentially a film about two old guys kind of being rejuvenated and having a, a sense of purpose in their life and it is such a one of the wackiest films I've ever seen that still kind of touches you in a way because you kind of feel for the characters as old men taking away kind of the fact that they're supposedly Elvis and supposedly JFK and just a brilliant film and it was great to see it on Blu-ray. Uh, next up this is a film that I wouldn't really rush out to go and buy but it was £8. It was like £18 in one bay, £8 in another so I thought I should jump on that really with the slipcover as well. The Five Year Engagement. Uh, this is a pretty good film from last year. It stars Jason Siegel and Emily Blunt as a couple who've been engaged for five years. Although we see that kind of progress throughout the film and it just it's basically just your standard kind of romantic comedy and uh, I wouldn't say it's groundbreaker or anything but I really enjoyed it and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing the extended version, I think it's like another five minutes or so and there's always loads of special features like the, the outtakes, deleted scenes and all that kind of stuff so really enjoyed that film and look forward to watching it again. Uh, what I liked about it is that it kind of it begins where a normal romantic comedy ends kind of thing so that was, it's, it's a bit different but um, Ultimately, not a game changer or anything. And then finally, from HMV, Haywire. And I was glad to get it with the slipcover as well. Uh, this is a really good film from last year. Underrated stars Gina uh, Carano. Uh, she is a UFC or former UFC. I don't know if she was UFC actually, but a mixed martial artist, uh, cage fighter, and she was very successful at that. And uh, you know, she's she's beautiful as well, and so she's tough. She's got the looks, and she's really going to be a huge film star. I think. I know she's in the new. Uh, Fast and Furious 6, so I'm sure her career is going to take off. And uh, I don't know why it, there wasn't more of a buzz around this film because it is a great, great thriller. Uh, she plays this kind of assassin, and um, Ewan McGregor is kind of like her boss, and um, he kind of sends her on this mission. And it's, you know, 
she's supposed to get killed or uh, something like that. I think she, she gets double crossed basically. So in the end, she's she's not in the end, but I mean, so that leaves her kind of on the run, kind of and out for herself kind of thing. And it's just such a great thriller. Uh, there's this great scene where she's being followed and she's walking across the street and it just goes on for ages and it's so well done, so realistic and of course because she is, she was a former cage fighter, she does all the stunts herself the fight scenes are amazing because it's not like a Hollywood kind of fight fight scene where it's like you know punch and then it cuts in really close and then you just see arms and legs flailing, you don't really see what happens, you just hear sound effects and stuff and really fast editing but this one the camera's back, you get to see the whole fight, and it's just like, boom, boom, it's so cool. I mean, more f films should take uh, uh, take, a, take, the, take, take the lead from this, I guess, and just kind of show more in fight scenes and just take the time to actually choreograph it and you know allow the audience to see more because that, this film really benefit, benefited from that. It's got a great cast as well. It's got Michael Fassbender briefly, Ewan McGregor, Bill Paxton, Channing Tatum briefly again. Antonio Banderas and Michael Douglas, those two play other higher ups in the kind of, you know, the, the shady kind of thing. Uh, next is Batman Year One. Uh, it's a fantastic animated Batman film. It's about an hour long, this one. Brian Cranston provides the voice of Commissioner Gordon, who's pretty much the main character of this. And kind of running concurrently with that is the first year of Batman. And it's a great adaptation of, of the great graphic novel, Batman Year One. And then the final uh, normal release is Moonrise Kingdom, an amazing Wes Anderson film. I'm doing a series on Wes Anderson films, so I'll leave my thoughts till then, but I'm really glad to get this on Blu-ray. One of my favorite films of 2012, and it's Wes Anderson. It's just amazing. Uh, this one came in yesterday, actually. I had this on pre-order as soon as it went up. It is Skyfall, the steelbook. Uh, unfortunately, I got um, <laughs> dealt one of the ones with the, the dreaded spine slash. I don't know if you can see that there, but... A lot of people have been getting this, just like a a, 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 a cutter slash right across the spine. Really annoying, but you know, nothing you can do about it really. Really nice cover. And the film itself is awesome, one of the best James Bond films in my opinion. Um, Daniel Craig did a great job, as well as everyone else in this film. Like the whole cast, you know, particularly Javier Bardem as uh, Silver, the villain, and Sam Mendes uh, did a great job directing. The cinematography is fantastic in this film. Um, and of course it's the, now the biggest British film of all time, which is really cool and something to be proud of, I guess, for us Brits. Uh, these I've shown in a package opening video before is Snow White and the Huntsman Steelbook from Future Shop. Sorry about the glare. Um, I really enjoyed this film, you know, it's a great fantasy and I've talked about it before. Um, enjoyed it a lot. Next one. Another Future Shop steelbook. This is probably one of my favorite steelbooks that I own. It is the Looper steelbook. The lenticular cover, the magnet cover. And uh, Looper is just, uh, again, I've talked about it before. I've got a review up on my channel if you want my extended thoughts on that. But Looper is just such an original film. Absolutely fantastic. I recently listened to a, a four hour podcast that Kevin Smith did with, um, with Ryan Johnson, the director of Looper. And it's just a great insight into his life and his career and the first film he made, Brick, and um, Brothers Bloom, and then this, Looper. And it's just fascinating and I completely have got a whole new sense of respect for Ryan Johnson and um, Looper's just a great piece of cinema. And uh, hopefully will be seen as something of a classic in the future because I think it's really groundbreaking and original even though people have been saying, oh, it's, you know, it's, it just rips off loads of different films. No, I don't think it does. I think it's uh, a different film. Very, very cool. And then uh, finally, we have uh, Lawless, the Play.com steelbook, which has all the bullet holes. I've done a video showing you up close this steelbook. A uh, really cool film from 2012, enjoyed it a lot. And finally, we have uh, something I had to order as soon as I'd finished reading The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, and I caved in and watched the, the American film. I wanted to watch the Swedish film first, but I just, I couldn't wait. I was just so into that story. Um, so I watched that, loved it, and then I got the uh, the extended versions of the uh, the original Swedish uh, TV productions. Um, they were released theatrically, but they were originally on, on TV. So we get all six episodes, which two episodes for each story. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Played With Fire, and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. 
I've only watched the first one so far. I'm going to wait until I read the books to watch the rest. Watch the rest of them. Oops, drop that. In. I'm sure my face probably looked uh, really attractive then. <laughs> Dropped it. Um, but I saw about the glare. Because I got the screen flipped over. Anyway, um, I prefer the American one. I hate to say it, but I think Rooney Mara just does. I don't want to say a better job, but just a better transformation, you know. Um, nothing against uh, Numi uh, Rapace, who played um, Elizabeth Salander in the Swedish versions. I mean, again, I haven't seen the other two, so. But as far as the first film goes, she's very. I guess it's the way that the character is, is portrayed in this. It's much more harsh. In the American David Fincher version, she's Salander's more personable. You can kind of relate to her a bit more and feel for her a bit more. I just, but again, I just feel like Rooney Mara did such a transformation. I mean, if you look at her now, or just you know before or after whatever, and how she looked in the film, it's ridiculous. I mean, the bleached eyebrows, the piercings, and everything, the weird hair, just a complete transformation. Whereas you know, with with Numi, it's kind of, you know, the hairs, you know, a bit goth, piercing. That's about it, you know. And I'm not saying that oh, you know, if you do, if you make more of a transformation to yourself physically, that means that you're a better, better, a better actor. Or actress, or that you you know do a better job, but um, I I just I really I like Rooney Mara's performance better, I think. But again, I haven't seen the other two, so yeah, I'm really happy to get this. It was only like ten pounds, ridiculous for all three, the extended version. So there we go. That is my final uh, Blu-ray update. I actually have the Dark Knight Returns Part Two on the way from Ryan Chowway, but I don't know when that's going to turn up. So um, I'll probably do a, a package opening of that anyway. So. That is it for now, um, my final um, Blu-ray update for a very long time, so thank you for watching if you've watched all of this, well done. Um, I actually feel like I didn't really talk about them that much, and it's been like, I don't know, a really long video, so <laughs> sorry about that, but um, there you go. Thank you for watching, thank you for continuing to watch all my videos and subscribing, and um, yeah, nothing else to add, I don't think. Um, let's see if I've forgotten anything. Remember last time I actually forgot so much that I'd gone. Um, well, okay, yes, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I got Finding Nemo, the metal pack. I haven't actually got the film though. It's from a uh, Robbie Webster. And the Brave metal pack hasn't actually got the film from Robbie Webster. And then again, um, the Cinderella metal pack so that is something I'll just do a little scan here yeah I think that's it <laughs> so I forgot a lot last time yeah that's it so thank you for watching see you next time yeah he's really cool <laughs> but he's not quite as cool as you cause <laughs>